Craftsman EZ3 Lawnmower. Removing control panel and operating components. William Hovey Smith, 2024. This is Hovey Smith, a backyard sportsman. And today, we're going to attempt to remove everything from this lawnmower frame back to the engine. And that includes this assembly right here, which is the control panel. Now we have some problems. Uh, we have successfully removed the steering wheel, which fit over here, and we found a problem that we will correct later on the mower we are rebuilding. And so this will now just slip off, and this rod will just go right through when we pull this unit. Well, uh, other things are not so simple. This, for example, this is a piece of molded plastic. It is attached to the lever of the throttle cable. And how do we get it off? It will not fit through this hole. And it will in no manner unscrew. This bulb here is very handy for the hand in operation. And I've tried to unscrew it with hand pressure and have been completely unsuccessful. I believe uh, this unit was molded onto this bent piece here and then installed from this end and welded to the rest of the assembly. So there's no way I can remove anything inside and withdraw it in this direction. So how do you get it off? The elegant solution would be to provide a precise amount of heat right here to soften this plastic enough so the bulb would just pull up and off. Yeah. Uh, and that could be done if I was on the inside, I had no wind, and under controlled conditions that might work. But I don't think it's going to work here because I do have wind. And I don't know if I, my heat source is hot enough or large enough to actually heat this to the point of extraction without burning this bottom. So what we may have to do is actually transect it with a torch like this, open it up, let what's going to burn, burn, and pull off the remainder in bits and pieces which is what I rather suspect. Hence, the aluminum foil here, which I'm going to put on the frame to keep this dripping, burning plastic from igniting anything. So, first we try the alternative. Can we detect any movement at all? No. No, I'm just uh, scarring the surface. I'm not moving anything. So the burn method is the way we'll have to go. We're getting to the climactic moment here, I think.
Can't imagine what's holding it in there, but something is, yeah. Ah, uh, finally. Okay, success. Support this channel by buying my outdoor books, business books, novels, and recommending them to your local libraries. It's not too early to think about next fall's hunting season, or even, maybe even using muzzle loaders for turkey hunting. And that's something I specialized in and also have covered in a series of e-books that cover all aspects of the sport. I'm a hunter, and so all these books are related basically to hunting with these old-fashioned kinds of guns, which are really a lot of fun. Will this panel lift off? And it does. Is the lower panel free? Except for wiring harness, it is. We now have a look at the next set of parts to go. And this is the steering. Which is very smooth, actually. Uh, now these gears have been used. But there are no broken teeth, and they're fine. Okay. Uh, there's a belt guide right there. You take out this self-threading screw, and then the guide should drop out from below. There it goes. Okay, so that's what your curious little belt guide looks like. And that is a nice bit of metal bending. I, I admire that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and this linkage here, the whole thing comes up and off by unscrewing these screws here. 
and I have to go underneath to do that obviously and there is a connection to this arm with a screw down there that I'll also have to get. And what we wound up doing is just cutting off this arm here. I spent altogether too much time trying to move that bolt and it was just too awkward to get at. Tried several different ways. But uh, at any rate, this piece is gone. We're left here with the control mechanism for the moor deck. Before moving to the other side, uh, the piece that our handle connects to, that looks like something somebody cut out with a cutting torch. Yeah, really does. And you'll notice down at the bottom that longish spring, about two inches, a smaller one, that connects to the frame. Uh, we're going to remove that spring before we go to the other side. After having removed this rod, which was here, and this spring, which was on the other side of our moor deck tensioning mechanism, uh, we are ready to take it out. And surprisingly, this comes out with fingers. Probably not designed that way, but that's the way this one is. Let's see. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. And there we go. That is out. Almost a brass washer there. We'll put this on right here. Okay, I'll hold everything. So now we have this complete assembly removed and our deck very nearly stripped down. We're winding up our day with the Craftsman's lawnmower. And we have done what we set out to do. That is, we have stripped the deck all the way from the rear to the engine here. And we removed uh, the components here including the electrical components are now gone. These guide bars are gone. This idle wheel, which was attached back here, is gone. We have recovered the belt, which is dirty, but usable. And incidentally, uh, a lot of these were 14 millimeter fittings right here, nuts and bolts. Concerning what we started with, the plastic knobs on the operating rods, uh, these are moldable and castable, by the way. Yes, you just have to be very careful as to not to get them to the heat of combustion, or they will flash on you. But, this is a strong, castable plastic. So if you ever thought that you might want to make a little plastic part, well, you can. And after you do a rough casting, uh, you can finish it with woodworking equipment to make it look like anything you wish. Now, concerning this engine, fellas, uh, any of you want it? Now, I'm sort of interested in tearing into it just to see what it looks like. But this engine was rated for white gas only. And if you don't know what that is, you probably don't want to fool with it. Because it is not generally available and hasn't been, at least in my area, for a decade or more. And it's a 15 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. A little typical small engine. And I'm curious to see what's wrong with it. Well, what's the thing that's obviously wrong with it? There's oil all over my carport down here. And when you attempt to turn the drive, 
Yeah, nothing happens. Uh, the cylinders are apparently seized. So, uh, we'll see if we can determine what the cause of failure really was. Now, uh, this is an interesting little engine in its own right. Hmm. So, if somebody wants something to play with and tear into and rebuild and whatever, now, yeah, just let me know. We'll see how we can get it to you. But the freight on this, uh, I don't know, probably be a hundred bucks. <laughs> but um, we'll we'll see. So for now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye. God bless, and see you next time.